Is Arizona the best place to retire? Now, no doubt you've been looking at lots of different options. Some of you might already be sold on Arizona. Others of you are looking at places like Palm Desert in California, the Las Vegas, Nevada area, even Texas, North Carolina, Tennessee, and of course, lots of people look at Florida. Today, we're going to talk about why I think Arizona is the best place to retire. Stick around and we'll get started. Hey everybody, it's Sean Jardine. I'm a local realtor here in the Phoenix area and I specialize in advising people on all of the different active adult communities. Now, since lots of us are starting to age into these communities, it's becoming a big question for many people. I get a lot of calls, emails, texts from you guys saying, hey, we're thinking of making a move to Arizona. What I've noticed is lots of people are also looking at other options. So today I really want to dig into why I think Arizona is the best option. Now I could live anywhere. I can sell real estate in any town in the universe practically. Real estate is real estate but I choose Arizona for many reasons. The first reason, obviously, my kids are here, my parents are here in Sun City. You guys know that if you've seen the videos with me driving around with them. Um, but realistically, I've got a lot of options and um, I still choose Arizona. So let's dive in to some of my reasons that I think will probably be your reasons. Now, the first thing I think that we need to address is weather. Arizona has amazing, amazing weather. Now, I know it's hot. A lot of you are going to say, yeah, but you've got that summer when it's 110 or 115 degrees. It's really not that bad. And if you want to compare our 110 to 85 degrees in Florida, I think our 110 is better. We don't have any humidity. Yes, I know it's, a, it's saying it's a dry heat, but it really is true. It's very, very dry. Sometimes for me, a little too dry. You use a lot of lotion on your skin and you end up drinking tons of water, which isn't a bad thing for health reasons. But once you adapt, you really won't give it a second thought. The other thing about our weather is we don't have extremes. If you're looking at Florida, you've got to think about hurricanes. You've got to think about humidity, um, tornadoes, lightning storms. I think Florida is the number one state in the country for lightning strikes. So think about that a little bit. What will that do to your homeowner's insurance? probably going to be higher in a state like that. If you're looking at Tennessee, same thing. Um, weather extremes only, they're going to have some snow, light snow and ice. I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to see a snow shovel again as long as I live. I left Colorado for that reason. I was sick of the snow. I like the warm, mild winter of Arizona. Now, if you're looking at Texas, again, tornadoes and um, ice storms in the winter. Nevada, similar to Arizona, Palm Desert, similar climate, but it's still California. So weather-wise, I think we are the optimal place to be. The next vote for Arizona retirement living comes in the form of cost of living. First, let's talk about property taxes. Property taxes in places like California and Texas are very high as compared to Arizona. The effective property tax rate for Texas, are you ready? 1.8%. Florida is 0.89%. California property tax rate is 0.76. 
Arizona. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner, 0.66. Now, I know you're going to say, yeah, but Texas and Florida don't have any state income tax. Very true. But think about it. In retirement, your income is much, much lower than it is when you're in your working years. Your property tax rate is going to be the same no matter what your income is. They don't care. They're looking at the property value. So think about that when you're computing your overall expense. The next thing we want to talk about is healthcare. Yes, everywhere in the country has healthcare. We all know that. However, because A, Phoenix is a very large city. Last time I checked, it was over 4 million. And I don't know, by tomorrow morning, we'll probably be at 5 million at the rate we're growing. But with more people come more healthcare options. Obviously, primary care can be found in any corner of um, the country. But if you're looking for specialty care, maybe you need a top-notch cardiologist. Maybe you need an oncologist if you're a cancer survivor or thriver. Um, nobody plans to get sick. But let me tell you this, on the day that you do get sick, your first thought is, oh my gosh, I want the best. We have the best right here. We've got Mayo Clinic, we've got the Banner Health System, Cancer Treatment Centers of America, you name it, we've got it. We even have a, a hospital in Phoenix dedicated just to heart care. So in Arizona, lots and lots of healthcare options. Our growing senior population also contributes to the need. And so large health networks know that there is a healthcare requirement here and they are choosing to um, continue to be here, to in some cases relocate here. And in the case of a lot of these large networks, Mayo Clinic um, being the top notch one, um, they're doubling in size. And I think by the time they're done doubling, they're going to have it to increase again. So healthcare is a big thing as you age. If you're 55, you may not think anything of it, but by the time you're 65, 70, 75, 80, having good healthcare very close to you is a big reason to choose Arizona, specifically the Phoenix area. The next big thing kind of goes along with our weather and that's outdoor activities. Year round, you can be outside. Yes, you don't want to go hike Camelback Mountain on you know, July 15th. However, you can take a nice walk early in the morning or late in the afternoon. You can also play golf year round. This is the epicenter for golf courses in America. In Scottsdale in particular, there's one golf course for every 10,000 people. They're literally on every corner throughout the valley. So if you're a golfer, lots of options. Also pickleball, if you wanna play pickleball outside, you can do that year round. Tons of tournaments um, choose to locate here and people travel from all over the country to play outdoors in this fantastic weather. Now, if you're not specifically into organized outdoor activities, let's talk about hiking. Hiking and walking are free, doesn't cost you a dime, and you don't necessarily even have to live in a 55 plus community to do that. Trails are all over the place. In some cases, you might have to pay a yearly fee for a community park or a state park. You know, I think one in um, the Cave Creek area might be $85 a year, or you can pay per use. You know, if you want to go up there and just hike once on a Saturday, just pay the daily fee to park your car and, and have at it. But great hiking trails. You could hike a different trail every week, practically, and never repeat. So lots of great options for just getting outside, get some blood flowing. Maybe you're not a super, super hiker. You just want to take a nice walk. You can do that in your neighborhood. You can do that at night after the golf course is closed. Lots of different options. And again, our great weather means that you can do that all year long.
If you like to swim, we've got lots of pools. If you're in an active adult community, there are great um, community center pools, usually both indoor and outdoor with things like water volleyball, with water aerobics. It just again, the whole key here is to keep moving, get some blood flowing. It's good for your body, it's good for your brain, and really good for your attitude. So if you're not in an active adult community, same thing. We have lots of great community centers scattered throughout neighborhoods in the valley where you can go and you'll find wonderful pools indoor and outdoor and generally they'll have a fitness center attached. Now if you want culture we've got it. Again big city means big city things. I came to Arizona from Colorado Springs, Colorado a medium-sized city of when I lived there about half a million people we just didn't have that much culture we, we had to go to Denver for everything and some of you are not coming from particularly large cities the benefit to retiring in the Phoenix area is that you can be in an outlying area let's say Pebble Creek at Goodyear Victory at Verado and Cantera in the East Valley lots of options but if you want to go see a world-class museum exhibit you can you just take a short drive into downtown Phoenix and you can do that we've got Western art museums we've got the musical instrument museum we've got a science museum natural history History, all kinds of options. The other thing that we have is fantastic Broadway level shows um, that will be either at um, locations in downtown Phoenix or at the Gamage Center at ASU. Um, Phoenix Symphony is here. Um, always a lot of fun to go to their holiday event. So um, culture abounds. Oh, I forgot also opera. If you're an opera buff, we do have opera performances going on throughout that season. So if you're a culture person, you will find it in the Phoenix area. Now for my sports friends, I have to mention that we've got every pro sport. We've got the Diamondbacks for baseball. We've got the Cardinals for football. We've got the Phoenix Suns for basketball. We've got a hockey team. I don't follow hockey anymore, so I don't even know what their name is. <laughs> Sorry about that hockey people, but we, oh, Coyotes, I think. Um, we have all the major pro sports. Then the big draw for people like me, I'm not a big sports fan now that my boys have grown up. I think I was um, oversaturated with sports when they, when they were young. Um, but I love to go to spring training baseball games. We have the Cactus League here where there are a bunch of teams with stadiums scattered throughout the entire valley and they rotate all playing each other. So you can go spend really not very much money, take your blanket, sit on the lawn or pay a little more and get a nice stadium seat and have a beautiful afternoon in March and watch spring training games. A lot of people specifically will come here for the spring training season because they love to go to every game and watch their team. Really a cool thing to do, again, outside of your active adult community or in you know, your own neighborhood if you just live outside the gates of an active adult community. One thing I want to mention is that next year we will be having the Phoenix Open and the Super Bowl in 2023 at the exact same time. So that is going to be event madness in this town. If you love big events, start thinking about it now and if you already live here you may want to rent your property out because vacation rentals will be at a premium during that time but you can if you don't want to go to the super bowl there'll be all kinds of amazing events throughout town um, kind of festival party kind of events where you can go you can participate in different things and i think you'll find that to be lots and lots of fun now, if you need an airport, Sky Harbor at Phoenix is a world-class airport. One thing that I do love about this airport, though, 
is it's not so gigantic that it's a nightmare to navigate. It's, I'd say, just a medium-sized airport. However, they've got gajillions of flights in and out of there, nonstop to all kinds of destinations, including international destinations. So if you want to take a nonstop to London, you can do that every day on the British Airways flight. Um, so easy to get in and out of as far as the parking is concerned or picking people up and dropping people off. Because when you live in Arizona, everybody wants to come see you, whether it's your kids, your friends from where you used to live, you will be making some airport runs. So it is a big part of living here. And I love this airport. Again, coming from Colorado, the airport in my town was kind of small, still is. And then Denver, it was, it was kind of a major ordeal to get in and out of there. Then you had to worry about the weather. We don't have a lot of flight delays coming out of Phoenix because the weather is good all the time. You're not gonna have a blizzard that's gonna delay your departure. You might have a little delay of a flight coming in if you're waiting on somebody from Chicago or Denver, but getting out of here is super, super easy. I love our airport. Now, of course, retiring in Arizona is going to require some place to live. Maybe you want to live in Phoenix or Tucson or Flagstaff or Prescott or Wickenburg. Lots and lots of different options that we can help you with. We've got partners all over the state that can show you property if you want an overview of multiple cities give us a call and we can talk about some of the options. Not everybody that we work with wants to specifically live in a dedicated active adult or 55 plus community. So don't feel like just because I do a lot of those videos, that's all I can help you with. We work with people who live in regular neighborhoods that are mixed ages. Some might trend older, some might trend younger. New construction, um, older homes that have been updated. You name it, we have something for every person and every budget. My team and I really love helping people who choose to retire in Arizona. The first thing I'd tell you to do is just reach out to me at the number below on the screen or to our email. Be sure to give me a call with enough lead time before you're planning your visit to the area so that we can block time to work with you. I really like to have a Zoom with people from my YouTube family just so I can meet you. You guys all know me, but I need to get to know you so that I can advise you better on where you might enjoy living. I kind of like to hear your story and... Um, just know a, a little bit about what makes you tick, why you want to move, and what your lifestyle is like, or what you want it to be like when you move. That will help me guide you to various neighborhoods and options and opportunities. So again, just reach out. I love hearing from you guys. It really makes my day when somebody calls me um, or you know, sends me an email from my channel because I just like to know that you're watching. I like to get your feedback um, and hear how my team and I can help you. It's our pleasure to work with people specifically from our YouTube family. So let's set a time to talk soon and I'll see you on my next video.